Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrencies and assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, that's some pretty good stuff. First up, Visa sees Bitcoin as a digital gold in the first quarter earnings call. This is on January 28th, and uh, it's not just digital gold of Bitcoin. They're also talking about another cryptocurrency or cryptocurrencies that they really consider digital gold. On top of that, we're going to take a look at a, uh, what's going to be a massive pump uh, that people are talking about as far as XRP and what is going on with that. And finally, we're going to take a look at India's cryptocurrency bill, catches industry off guard, investors are nervous, and surprise, surprise, India is once again trying to ban cryptocurrencies. So we'll go over all that, uh, but first, let's take a look at two things. First, I want to talk about Voyager and what happened over the last couple of days. So if you're not aware or if you don't live in the United States, excluding New York, Voyager is a brokerage. It's not an exchange. It actually connects to uh, all the different exchanges uh, throughout the world, and they uh, are market makers. And what happened was they had gone down. Um, it was over Friday, and it was down for quite a bit of time, and I think it came up again like around uh, almost midnight on Friday. So the big issue here is that uh, I have I'm a huge proponent of it. I love Voyager. It works out pretty well. And it was great because it would never go down. Well, it went down. So I talked about this yesterday about why it, why it all happened. Everything that was going on with Wall Street bets and TD Ameritrade and Robinhood and all the different uh, shenanigans that were going on, it is pushing everybody into our market. And Voyager got the brunt of it, which is uh, you know what it should actually do. And a ton of people, uh, there was up to, the report stated that it was 100 people per minute, not hour, 100 people per hour, per minute were signing up for Voyager and it crashed. And that's a problem. And it was a big problem. I talked about it yesterday again. And uh, there really is, uh, is no excuse. I had uh, a interview lined up with uh, Steve Ehrlich, who was the uh, CEO of Voyager, friend of the show, been on three or four times. And uh, he said, you know, on Saturday, yo, let's do it. I had some things going on. He had some things going on. We tried to do it at night. Didn't work out. Text him this morning. Uh, via Twitter or DM'd him and he's like, you know what? There's a lot of things going on right now I need to make sure everything is correct and we will do the uh, interview on Tuesday So it is what it is and I know some people are like, you know what you said it would never go down this Yeah, I did say that and it went down. Yes, it did and some people will say well You know what? It's 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 not so bad because you know There's all these new people coming in and that's just that's a different thing than, than when uh, like Coinbase and Kraken and Gemini go down uh, because they have a problem with actually uh, market matching. And I'm like, hey, down is down. It doesn't really matter to me. I, I just know that I couldn't get into my account. I know you couldn't get into your account. So that's a big problem. So here's the thing. Uh, Steve's going to come on on Tuesday. And uh, there's no excuses. Nobody gets a free pass in this show. I don't care how many times you've been on here. I don't care how friendly you are. It's, uh, it's a business. So we'll see what he says on Tuesday and we'll go from there. It's up to you right now. You could vote with your with your wallet, with your checkbook, and do whatever you want to do. Just say, you know what? It was, it was down that, those couple of times. I'm out of here. I don't want to do it. It's fine. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, and that's how it goes. That's how business is. So uh, let's, let's move on to uh, what's going on in the market. Huh? So let's see here. It is uh, January 31st. It is 3 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. Beautiful day. 64 degrees. Balmy. Nice. Uh, I'm sorry for wherever you're at, uh, if it's uh, crappy weather, New Yorkers. But uh, here's what we got going on. Sunday is always one of these days. If you're new to cryptocurrency, this is pretty much how we do things. Uh, Monday through Saturday is pretty good, then Sunday kind of takes a little bit of a dip, and then that's just kind of how it works out. So uh, we've got uh, Bitcoin uh, down 5%. <laughs> Surprise. And uh, we're at 32.6. ETH uh, still hovering around 1,300. And I, you know, I got to tell you, everybody talks about how great ETH is, it's, you know, a 10K or 20K or a million K. <laughs> Or whatever they say, I don't even know what the predictions are anymore, but it's going pretty damn slow. Uh, that, that's what's going on. Now, 2021's not over. Uh, that, that's all I'm saying. But, uh, you know, if you want to look at things that are rising, uh, just take a look at the, uh, you know, lower caps that are out there and maybe find yourself a winner. Uh, we had talked about the Voyager token, and it was uh, ranked 284 on January 7th, and today I think it's in the top uh, 75. So, you know, just one of those things. I mean, Polkadot uh, was, uh, came out of nowhere. Chainlink a year ago, not, not that big of a deal, but here we are. Uh, XRP, watch out, 24% up 75% for the seven day. We're gonna talk about what is going on, why there is this massive increase. Uh, Polkadot down, idiot down, did do. I hate when it does this. 
is always this one of doing these videos. It's kind of like uh, glitches out a little bit. Uh, three is anything up? Dogecoin. Hey, 28%. And uh, we're down to like uh, 0 0.04, which is a bummer. You know, I, I think it was up to like point. It was almost at seven, almost at eight cents. I think it was at some point. So Doge holders, hey, you're still up. Do what you want to do. Some people are telling me that they're not going to sell because it's going to a dollar. Sure. So let's see how that works out. And, uh, you know, hey, maybe. I don't know. I have, no, I have no crystal ball. And that's what's going on right now in the market. Real quick, let's switch this over to Bitcoin. Because, I mean, what's the whole point of investing into altcoins if we could just invest into Bitcoin? So this is how we do. Well, for XRP, if you invest in XRP, you're up 31% against Bitcoin. Poke it out, 2.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. You're crushing Bitcoin on pretty much every single altcoin that is out there. And that's just one of those lessons. If you want to be safe, you can get into Bitcoin. All the different, uh, you know, huge entities, institutions are getting into it. They're going to hold on to it. Bitcoin, that's what they're going to do. Hold on to it. If you want to take a little bit more risk, you go into altcoins. And that's why I have a, a portfolio that is, is uh, 10 plus different cryptocurrencies because I think Bitcoin's going to do well. I think Ethereum's going to do well. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think, uh, uh, not EOS. EOS is, is almost a crushing dead project. Uh, I think Polkadot will do well. Um, a lot of different things are going to do well. Ave will do well. So you just kind of, I mean, for me, I can't give you financial advice because guess what? I'm not a financial advisor, but I think those will do pretty well uh, moving forward. So it's all up to you. See which is, is the best uh, project out there. All right. So that's what's going on uh, in the uh, market. Let's jump into today's top story. So this was pretty good. This was actually sent to me by uh, Crown Staking Pool. Thanks, Crown. I appreciate it. This is over on the uh, Bitcoin channel. Uh, this is a pretty good channel, actually. I, I need to actually put that in my recommendations because they always have like, all they do is they just put like little news snippets that are on TV or they find little things. They just throw it onto YouTube. It's pretty, pretty brilliant, actually. And this one was, it's a two minute uh, little piece here. And it's the uh, Visa Q1 uh, earnings call. So, I mean, uh, we're looking at, well, it says Q1 2021. I guess this will be what is going on right now. But it doesn't matter what, what's really going on with Visa. What it is, is Visa is talking about how they see cryptocurrencies and digital assets kind of fitting into their infrastructure. And we had actually talked a couple days ago about how Visa was partnering up with Circle and USDC to offer that uh, through Visa. USDC, the stable coin. So first, let's hear what they think about as far as Bitcoin. And then we'll get into that um, other realm of digital gold. So let's just take a listen. Fiat currencies. But there's a growing interest in digital currencies. And I wanted to take a minute to talk about how Visa thinks about crypto in general and our approach. In this space, we see ways that we can add differentiated value to the ecosystem. And we believe that we are uniquely positioned to help make cryptocurrencies more safe, useful, and applicable for payments through our global presence, our partnership approach, and our trusted brand. We think of the crypto market in two segments. First, there are cryptocurrencies that represent new assets, such as Bitcoin. Second, there are digital currencies or stable coins that are directly backed by existing fiat currencies. We see all currencies in that first segment as digital gold. They are dominantly, uh, predominantly held as assets that are not used as a form of payment in a significant way at this point. Our strategy here is to work with wallets and exchanges to enable users to purchase these currencies using their Visa credentials or to cash out onto a Visa credential to make a fiat purchase at any of the 70 million merchants where Visa is accepted globally. This is similar to our approach to connect closed loop wallets such as uh, Line Pay and Paytm. For the second segment, fiat backed digital currencies, including stable coins and central bank digital currencies. These are an emerging payments innovation that could have the potential to be used for global commerce, much like any other fiat currency. We think of digital currencies running on public blockchains as additional networks, just like RTP or ACH networks. So we see them as part of our network of network strategy. Across both of these segments, we are the clear leader in this space. Today, 35 of the leading digital currency platforms and wallets have already chosen to issue Visa, including Coinbase, Crypto. Yeah, yeah. And then they just go on and talk about how great they are. So great. Visa, you know, yeah, you're, you're dominating right now. So it is interesting that uh, a legacy uh, system such as Visa is really coming out and going, you know what? 
we feel which way the wind is a blowing, so we're going to be a part of this right here and now. I think that's why they teamed up with Circle and USDC as far as a stable coin. And now they're getting into it like, look, we can't stop it. So we might as well just, you know, get in front of it and just see if we can like uh, just ride the coattails. So I don't know exactly what they're going to do, but when a, when a huge, huge entity like Visa comes out and goes, you know what? We see it as two things. We see Bitcoin and currencies or cryptocurrencies. And, I, and they didn't say anything else, mind you, okay? They didn't say Ethereum, they didn't say Polkadot, and they didn't really even talk about smart contracts or DeFi or any of that stuff because that's not their thing. They, they're not gonna get into that. So if they can just say, okay, Bitcoin, because everybody else out there, we've got the micro strategies, you got the mass mutuals, you got the big hedge funds coming in, you've even got BlackRock for Pete's sakes with its eight trillion asset center management who is coming in and investing into Bitcoin. Sure, we'll finally be the ones to go, yeah, we're going we're gonna to add this in. But I will remind you, up to a couple of years ago, Visa was the one that was uh, try, trying to issue all these different cryptocurrency patents. And there was a video I did oh, eight months ago, nine months ago. And I just thought it was interesting because nothing really came about it. But then here we are today, and Visa is talking about how they're right behind us, and they can't wait to be a part of it. So let me know what you think in the comments section. It is just... For us, it's not a big thing. But if you have to think about it like this, when, when he said there are 70 million merchants and payment providers, that's pretty big, just like how PayPal is in the game. And they're saying, hey, you can use Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ethereum for our 340 million merchants out there uh, that we can expose you to. Uh, and you guys can use all that cryptocurrency. So you have them and then you have Visa. And what it just does is it allows this to get into the public consciousness. That's all I really care about uh, because that's why I think 2021 is going to be a pretty big year because people are going to start to really go, oh, it's not just Bitcoin. There's a lot of other things out there. Anyhow, let me just say in the comment section, let's move on to our next piece. So this is interesting. And uh, this was uh, sent to me by Wynn Mullet. Mullet, thanks so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> My man, Mullet. And uh, this was... You know, if you take a look at what is going on with or what was going on with uh, Wall Street bets and how they battled the hedge funds and say, you know what, we know you want to short our company, whether you think it was an, an ideological uh, fight or not, or if it was just a beautiful play as far as like, uh, you know, making a ton of money, it doesn't matter. It still was, it still went to show you that you can have a, a, a group of people stand up to large entities and beat the pants off them. And uh, that's, I think, is what is going on right here with XRP. Uh, XRP, the XRP army has gotten beat down, let's just be honest. Uh, the SEC came in and it's got to suck because all the different gains that are going on just popping off, XRP just has to sit there and just go, you know, hopefully this happens. And, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be pretty tough. So they're going to fight back. And um, I was talking to, about this on an Alex Maschili show. I was like, you know, Actually, CJ said it best. He said, be cautious of any asset that is supposed to die and just never just refuses to die. He goes, Bitcoin is supposed to die a, a hundred thousand times. And look at that, that, look at where we are right now. It's the same thing with XRP. XRP was supposed to be dead. I thought I was going to go through a lot more troubles, especially when all the different exchanges delisted everything, but here we are. And now we can see on February 1st at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, there's a buy and hold. And it even, even tells you where to buy it. You can buy it on KuCoin. Oh, I didn't know you could buy an uphold. Look at that. I have an uphold wallet. I don't know. I'm going to tell you right now. I have no idea. I'm not going to participate in this because um, I don't know how this is going to play out. This is very volatile. I'm not a volatile person, <laughs> which is kind of funny that I'm in cryptocurrencies. But I do think that they're, I honestly think that, that digital assets are the future. And there's a little volatility now, but in the future it won't be. But if you want to check this, this out, KuCoin, Uphold, and BitTrue, then be my guest. Again, not financial advice, but... Uh, if you saw what happened with GameStop, if you saw what happened with Dogecoin, you could maybe guess about what could potentially happen with XRP and what's going to go on. And this has been making the rounds, and that's why we've seen a huge jump. So let me know what you in the comment section about this one. This could be massive. I have no idea, but I'm just going to grab my popcorn and sit on the sidelines and watch the show unfold. All right, next up, this is our, our last, last piece, and it's just, trash <laughs> it's just trash because this has already happened before in india and let me just get in the story india's cryptocurrency bill catches industry 
uh, off guard, investors nervous. Of course they should be because a, a, a huge country is going to uh, ban, ban cryptocurrency. We're looking at a billion plus people, it's pretty big. India's cryptocurrency community was swept by a wave of nervousness and confusion after the government on Friday said it would introduce a bill in parliament to aid creation of a sovereign digital currency by the Federal or the Reserve Bank of India, RBI, and ban all private cryptocurrencies. And this is why I want you to suspend judgment until you get all the facts. It's the same thing with everything else that, that isn't actually anywhere. It doesn't matter about, about this market or anything else. Get all the facts that you possibly can and then pose judgment, okay? So I'll explain that in a second. So this is what's going on. So uh, this is a statement. There's no such thing as a private cryptocurrency. Cryptos, by their very nature, are decentralized and public. Nishal Shetty, founder of one of India's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, Wazir X uh, said in a tweet because there was the, the language in the actual uh, document that is supposed to be written up and, and really, I don't know if anybody actually has actually seen it because it really hasn't been uh, uh, produced, but it says that we cannot have any kind of uh, public blockchains as far as cryptocurrencies, but that's the whole thing. When you have a decentralized cryptocurrency, it is public, so that means that they're trying to ban everything, allegedly, Let's get to that. So. The government's definition of private could imply that any, that any digital currency that is not sovereign could be seen as a private currency, including Bitcoin. Let's go with some history. In 2018, RBI decided to ban the use of banking channels to buy or sell crypto as it was concerned over its use for terror financing, money laundering, and other outlawed activities. Have you ever heard that before? Cryptocurrencies revived after the Supreme Court in March 2020, lifted the RBI ban, giving cryptos a second chance in India. I thought it was a pretty good play because Wazir X, which was the exchange over there, I think that was backed by Binance. It was a beautiful move uh, by CZ because he's like, hey, ha, just waiting for this thing to get on ban. And sure enough, it did. And it uh, looked like a genius. Now they have to go through the whole thing again because here we are. So just awful. Because the first one was the uh, Reserve Bank of India decided to ban the use of banking channels. And it went through their Supreme Court. And they said that is... That is against their constitution. They said you can't do that. The Reserve Bank can't do that uh, to these private citizens. And it was overturned. Now, instead of the Reserve Bank of India, now it is actual parliament or, uh, or whatever uh, form of government that they have over there. They say, hey, we're going to get legislation in and we want to ban uh, these, these cryptocurrencies. And that's a problem, allegedly. And the rest of it's just the same type of thing. And they thought, right, Dalio, whatever. But this is the big thing. The bill drafted by the Indian government is yet to be released. So when you see something like that, again, this could be the, the, the consideration of a FUD article because it's just a rumor. We don't really know what's going on. Case in point, let me show you this one. Do you remember this article that we talked about a couple days ago, just last week? Janet Yellen says cryptos are a concern in terrorist financing. And it was that. It was uh, BitMEX when they came out and said, oh, there's a big double spend. And they came out and was like, well, maybe not so much. And it was 20 bucks and maybe it was this. And, and it was proven that the, there wasn't a double spend. So that was uh, a big thing. And then we have something like Yellen coming out who uh, was the nominee for the uh, secretary or the treasury secretary. He's taken over Mnuchin's job. And then she was confirmed. And then all of a sudden, just a couple of days later, this little piece came out. Janet Yellen offers US Senate a more nuanced take on crypto. Where she, I don't read it. So, where she said, okay, there are some illicit activities going on, just like there is with the US dollar, but cryptocurrency digital assets has an amazing ability to transform finance, and we should foster that. So, it's like, okay, these are the type of things that you have to suspend judgment until you get all the facts. And that is why I'm extremely excited to get Steven here from Voyager to see exactly what the heck happened how they fixed it, and how we're gonna you know, deal with this moving on. And that's just one of the things. So just remember, all the different things and, and articles out there, always dig a little bit deeper. It doesn't matter if you hear it from me or anybody else. It just, uh, there's always more information out there to uncover. It's just uh, a lot of work to do it sometimes. And uh, that is what uh, is going on. So that is it for today. It is, it is Sunday, uh, enjoy the day. If you made it all the way to the end, hey, thanks. Thanks for making all the way, way, way to the end. Why don't you hit the thumbs up, maybe consider subscribing. That would help me a lot. And uh, that would be great uh, for today's video. Also, 
If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. Let YouTube uh, do its magic. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.